I'm making cherry pie filling today. I'm going to make some hand pies. So I've got butter, and these are just Bing cherries. These were previously frozen. I have a combination of some that I took the pits out. I have a cherry pitter. It's a really simple tool. It makes it nice and easy. You just pit the cherries right over top of a glass measuring cup or a bowl, whatever you prefer. That will get rid of the pit and you just save the excess juices. These are Bing cherries. Some of these are store-bought They or big bags. They have in BJ's, but most of the grocery stores have cherries in their freezer. So now we say work smarter, not harder. So why not use ones that are already pitted? And then we'll just add sugar and there's lemon juice in here and then corn starch slurry to thicken as they start to soften. The pie filling is starting to thicken. I poured in about a quarter cup of cold water that was mixed with two heaping teaspoons of corn starch. You can also use tapioca flour. And you just make a slurry and you're going to pour it in and you're going to see that it starts to, it's sort of going to simmer. It needs to get enough heat on it to be able to cook that and we're going to continuously stir that as it starts to pop like that. I do not squish my berries or my fruit at all for this recipe. They will sort of pop and dissolve a little bit so you'll end up with some cherries that are larger. So we'll get this thickened. It's really going to come to a nice simmer and just keep stirring it as you go so you don't burn the bottom. We're making cherry hand pies today. I'm using homemade pie crust. You can use homemade pie crust, store-bought card pie crust, or you can certainly use bis refrigerated biscuit dough. Traditionally they used a, a biscuit dough type of dough and they usually did homemade but you can use store-bought if you prefer. I do tend to like the pie crust in my recipes for hand pies. I do like a homemade pie crust as well. It's easier to work with. I can pinch off what I need. I make multiple bags that are in the refrigerator so the dough is nice and chilled. If the, gel, if the dough warms up too much then I just change out the bags. You can plop it in the freezer for a few minutes. I'm gonna make an oval shape my edges are going to be a little thicker, that way they pinch together nice. You can see the pieces of, the nice pieces of butter in this pie crust. And the cherry pie filling, we made that a day ahead of time. I refrigerated it overnight so it's nice and chilled. It's just going to go in the center of this as best as I can. Fold the dough over, press it down a little bit, trim the edges. I will save the edges as long as I don't have it overworked, as long as these are fresh. I'll work them into other pieces of dough. And then I just do a little flour with a fork and pinch the edges. They'll go on a half sheet pan that's lined with pre-cut pieces of parchment paper. And then they'll get covered with plastic wrap and we'll plop the whole tray right in the freezer. We'll take them out as we need them and either thaw on the counter or thaw in the refrigerator overnight. I usually make several hundred pies ahead of time. I have lots of people that usually ask for an entire tray. So that's what they look like at the end. is on a website. I do tend to like to have a little bit more moisture in my pie crust, so I'll say that I do have a measurement on there of water. However, my personal preference is I just actually fill a two cup uh, glass measuring cup with ice cubes and then I just keep adding cold water to it and I work with the pie crust and get it to clump together nicely and as it clumps together I put it into a large freezer bag and then put it in the refrigerator. I don't want the whole thing. I usually do a very large batch so I don't want to make it into one big lump of pie crust at a time. I take it out as it becomes 
able to be sort of clumped together with your fingers and mine it is a little bit more moist I'd rather have a little bit more moist so I can have roll it in plenty of flour and that way it sticks together too and you you really don't have the issue of it falling apart I can pick it up like this and it's totally fine I do make pie crust by hand um, with a pastry cutter I do not use my preferred method is by hand I do not use a food processor my mother used to use a food processor but she would actually say in the end that my pie crust tasted better because I honestly think you just overwork it you have too much of a chance of overworking it when you're using a food processor and therefore it becomes tough so I'm just going to turn this over press the edges down trim them this is just a pastry wheel but you can use a small pizza cutter And we're just going to crimp the edges, press down with some flour. If a little pie filling comes out, don't worry about it. Just get some plenty of flour around the edges. Sometimes the pie filling ends up coming out this end. I'm not going to worry. See, there you go, right there. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to put flour there, press it together, and move on. These are going to be fried, so I'm not going to cut any edge, cut any vents holes in there. We're going to leave it solid because we're going to fry them. I don't want any fry oil in there. I don't want my pie filling to escape into the fry oil. And these are going to freeze. They're in a half sheet pan. I do five across, three rows. You can fit six. I just like that they're flat with five. So they're slightly overlapped. They'll go into the freezer. I cover them with plastic wrap. And then they'll freeze and they generally pop apart really easy when they're extremely frozen. 